and welcome back to week two of the Fitness Marshall Tour. We are going to be on our way to Brooklyn and Toronto today. First, we have a live stream and then, well, we're going to Brooklyn, Toronto this weekend. Today, we are heading to Boston, Invisalign, sorry, um, because we are meeting up with Fernanda to get our hair done. Uh, it's exciting. We're coming to her this time, so that's really fun. Um, and so you're just gonna see everything that unfolds this the rest of this week and the weekend and I'm gonna take you along with me Let's go. Also, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that I posted that I had to say goodbye to my Macy girl I have an M right here for her um, I'm probably going to talk a little bit more in depth at the end of this vlog and just tell you kind of what happened if you don't follow me on Instagram. I didn't really talk about it on Instagram, I just kind of posted about it. Um, but right now there's a lot to do. I don't like want to get emotional right now, so I'll put that at the end. But, um, I just wanted to start it off by saying that just to get it out of the way and we'll talk later. So now we're going to get ready for the live stream. I also just realized this hair is doing something. Um, so I know I'm really excited to get my hair done. This lighting is very not good. <laughs> um, I'm excited to get my hair done. I have lots of breakage and I'm, I, it needs a little TLC from Fernanda. So I'm excited uh, to see her. So I just wanted to add that. I saw, I looked at that clip back and I was like, oh my God, my hair is like, what are you doing? It's, it's not like, in the best place right now. <laughs> I've already watched every single movie on Delta. Welcome back. <laughs> Yesterday was um, so very boring. All we did was be on that plane. And then we got here at midnight, went to bed probably by two. <laughs> We're eight and, and we are up to go to Fernanda's to get our hair done. So you will come along with us. I am very sorry I didn't record on the plane, but you've all seen us sitting on a plane before. Uh, and today is a new day, so let's do it. Hey. Okay, so we have made it to Fernanda's salon. Like I said, we have, uh, I think the last time we were here, it was like five years ago maybe. And so we are finally back, which is very exciting. We had like a little chat about my breakage that's happening. And I think we're just gonna do like my roots around my hairline, just like dark and give the blonde a break. And then do like a keratin and Olaplex and all of those things to like really try to make it healthier because <laughs> um, admittedly I have not been taking care of the blonde as I should ever since May um, we can chat about that later but yeah it's like just I have lots of breakage around here and I haven't been doing what I should to have blonde hair so hopefully today we'll get it back in check and I'll get back on a better schedule of uh, taking care of it but we're here. <laughs> Let's call it a sorry. Strawberry chocolate. Strawberry. Okay, we have a strawberry chocolate. This is such an interesting way that I'm doing this. Okay, we've been given this strawberry chocolate with condensed milk, I think. This is gonna be a really good angle, but I'm gonna give you a taste test. Where is this from in town? It is from here, actually. So. Wait, okay. Wait, let me move the fan. I'll move the fan so you can put it over. <laughs> I'll just do this. It's not that serious. Okay. Try it. Oh, my. Mmm. <laughs> Welcome to my food review channel. <laughs> Ten out of 10. Mm -hmm. My teeth hurt so bad, though, from my Invisalign that. <laughs> okay, wow. Yum. Woo. Okay, so the keratin situation is now at the point where someone has to flat iron <laughs> for like two hours <laughs> and it's, I always feel so bad 
And so I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but it is a very, um, it's a long process, but it is worth it. Look who's back to <laughs> work on my keratin. He just hit, he missed it so much. Yeah. <laughs> like he just had to come back and do it. <laughs> what an honor. Okay, so we're starting color, and basically, um, my hair is broken, <laughs> and we have to go a little darker, so we're going to not do any more blonde today. She's going to, like, do a little bit more darker around, like, blending this. Am I saying this right? You are. Okay, great. It's literally okay. <laughs> You're going to have plenty of blonde left. Yeah. It's the right thing to do. If you can't do it right now, that's okay. We're doing the right thing for your hair. Yeah. And then she's gonna tone it to like cool it down, and we're gonna do a little cut. I think I'm gonna do some like long. Is it bangs? Yes. Yeah, Layers. Part of bangs. Um, we're it's like the tr the slow transition to a possible bang. That's it. <laughs> because I'm too scared to go. And I also just put my hair half up so much with dancing. I like I don't know how to have it in my face. It stresses me out. So it's yeah. gonna be a long. What every other girl has. You know, I just every other girl. Ooh, 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 who is she with her curtain bangs? Um, we went a little bit darker because it'll fade pretty quickly back to blonde. And then I have a little bit of a silver um, conditioner to like add it back in. So we went a little bit darker than expected, but I am excited about it. Yee! Now, can I recreate like curling bangs? Who knows? <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, one picture of the hair. Let's see. You're gonna face. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. She <laughs> She's ready. So, we have gotten ready and we are coming to dinner. We're going to Fogo de Chao. Fernanda is a Brazilian woman and she is taking us to Fogo de Chao for some Brazilian food. Beth is here, Caleb's mom. There she is. She's been to Fogo de Chao. We, the three of us, have not, so it'll be a first experience for us. Are you happy to be here? Yeah. She's coming on um, tour with us as our tour assistant. Are you excited for that? I'm. I actually am super excited. <laughs> yeah, I am. What happened? So mad. Okay, so we <laughs> we've been here. I'm having a rosé. He's having a red wine. Um, and we have tried many of meat already and we sat down and all of a sudden it started coming so I forgot to record anything but everything is delicious. 10 out of 10. I like meat. <laughs> I told Caleb to surprise us with... Oh! Metro cake for 500k. Congrats! <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> Where's your other eye? I don't want you to go. This way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we yeah. are saying goodbye to Fernanda. We have to go to bed immediately. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're so, so full. full. <laughs> but we're saying goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Or for having me. You for coming in here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I meant. Thanks for coming all the way out here. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we need Lauren. <laughs> I'm Cindy. There's, there's powder. These are, this is a controlled substance. Here's my hairdo. I'm working on it. I feel like I look like Haley. You do. <laughs> she told me I did. And, and yeah. I also have a skirt on, and so does she. So that's a thing. And it wasn't on purpose, it just happened. Um, we're I walking. Really <laughs> well, I also have dark hair right now. Um, we are going to Pokemon Go Fest. I didn't know this was a thing. Was a thing. I feel like Caleb swindled us into this and is pretending like. He didn't know it was happening. <laughs> and um, uh, here we are. 
we a funny little story we have been we took the train and then we are walking from like harlem area over and caleb has his vlog camera out all in like a three second period um he has his vlog camera Haley goes you're gonna get robbed he drops his wallet picks it up and then the mailman is walking by and he goes dude you got you better put that away like it's gonna get swiped so it was just like a really funny like series of events so once we get into go fest we'll hang out for a little bit and then we have dinner reservations and we're getting a very early night so that we can be up for the show tomorrow so that's what's happening trying to leave but these two won't let us we gotta go we have a dinner reservation let's go Welcome to show I'm day. <laughs> um, get my phone died yesterday. I Pokemon Go'd a little too much and my phone died. So I could not film anything else yesterday evening. Uh, but here are some pictures of our time. We are just about to do sound check and then start our meet and greets. There's the steepest of stairs. <laughs> and I have forgotten my mic belt, so I have to go back down. Oh, this is again. Here are the stairs. Crazy. And here is our stage. It's sound check time. There we are. Wow, this lighting is so good. No. Can I just watch that whole video again just to see? Yeah. yeah. We are here, and I want the stage blacked out for that, like when we come on. check our pictures and we were just chatting I have you know everyone's life story no I have the worst memory I'm really sorry I will I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning okay we are backstage we're stretching we're getting ready um we just had our meet and greets that were really fun and you know that's it hi especially speaking <laughs> um, we're back in this lovely storage room. It's like actually a green room up there. Why wouldn't that be our green room? It's a green room. We're gonna go look. Let's go look. So we have been downstairs in the basement. Oh! Oh! We could have been up here this whole time. And there's a bathroom and a shower? Wait, we should use this. We can use this. Like, we, we get out at a certain time because she was like, oh, right now. Oh, yeah. There is supposed to be a hard out on us leaving, but we need to shower. <laughs> I wasn't recording at all. Toronto um we 
went to the airport and we ate, ate dinner and then we got on a plane and then we came here and that's really all you missed um it's late we're waiting for laundry to get done um for our clothes that we have to wear tomorrow on the show and then we will be there so um you know nope what i don't know she doesn't know i don't <laughs> my feet hurt my feet hurt i'm, I'm sleepy <laughs> Like, um, wait, get to, if there's hummus on there, we should get There that. was hummus. <gasps> okay. Pretzels? Listen, pretzels, peanut butter, apples, apple, hummus. Great. Good plan. Okay, well, that's, you know, that's the 411. And um, I do apologize for the disjointed vlogs. I really don't know how to do it any other way. So if you're here, you know that about me and you're happy with it. Or you tolerate it. was asleep and I was trying to call him and you know what woke him up? <laughs> An earthquake. Five yeah. of them actually. Um, there's been five earthquakes. So now there's a hurricane and five earthquakes and we're just flying there and I realized it sounds like irresponsible but like what are we to do? You I would know? say that they would know better than we do so like I'm just going to trust the professionals. No one's okay. stopping us. No one's you know? stopping us and so that's my cue to go. Um, and so that's what we're going into and I you know, I'm not gonna say I'm not nervous, but um, what can I do? Okay, so it's been a few days actually since I filmed everything else. It's actually been like a week. Um, we <laughs> have already done our next weekend of shows and I have fallen behind on uploading vlogs and everything, but I did want to finish this vlog. Like I said at the beginning, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Macy and um, kind of what happened and the experience. I wasn't really ready to talk about it before. 
And I'm not gonna get into like the greatest of detail just because I am still oh, processing and it's still super sad and I miss her so much. Um, it has gotten easier for me to not cry. I was crying every single day, multiple times a day for at least the first week and a half after. And then uh, beyond that, like it has gotten easier, which I don't know how I feel about. Like it's such a weird thing with grief. Like I've lost all of my grandparents at this point and I was explaining it to someone where like that is a great pain. But with my grandparents, like you're never ready for someone to die. But I also feel like you have a period of time, like as you know, they get older to kind of process, like their life is coming to an end. And you know, you start like savoring the time you share with them and all of that. And like, also some of my grandparents died when I was young like my my dad's father died when I was pretty young and like I honestly didn't process that very much because I was like I think like six years old um and then like my most recent grandparents that died over the last like few years like they you know they were around a really long time but I had that time to process so all that to say like I when Macy got diagnosed with diabetes, I thought that I still had a year or two left with her. Like people say that small dogs, you know, can live a lot longer than bigger dogs. And so I was thinking her lifespan really was, you know, in the more like 15 year range, which obviously was a little bit, um, I don't know what the word is, naive of me, just, you know, rose colored glasses thinking like I would have her, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be this soon. <laughs> um, and that I'm not upset that I was thinking that way because like truly up until the week before I left, like she still had some energy in her. She had lost a significant amount of weight, but I kept being reassured that that was, that happens with diabetes and that once we get her regulated on the insulin, um, you know, her weight will even out again. And so I didn't find it super large cause of concern. Um, but like, you know, we still played fetch. She was tired quicker when we played fetch. You know, it wasn't very many times back and forth, but like, you know, she would do it. And, you know, I would try to make her, you know, go up the stairs without me carrying her at least once a day to keep her joints moving and like get some movement and exercise in because I didn't want her to, you know, just sit and like not move her legs. Like I, I didn't want her to carry her everywhere and her not like still use the muscles and all of that. So she was still moving quite normally, maybe not as normal as, you know, six months ago. But from what I saw, like it didn't seem like she was going to be gone in the next week. So when I came back from North Carolina, um, the night that I came back, like she was just very off and she was up all night and she was having accidents. I had lined my bedroom with potty pads because like I, she was wanting me to take her out every like 15 minutes. And I was so tired from traveling back that I was like, I can't <laughs> do this, I have to sleep. So I just kind of like brought her water in the room. I like put a bunch of potty pads down and then like I noticed maybe around four in the morning that she um, was like kind of stumbling around and that's when I was like, oh, this is not good. Uh, I emailed my vet because they obviously weren't opening until like 8 a.m. And I was just like, this is what's happening. Um, you know, she's like having these accidents. I think she might have vomited once or twice and like she's kind of stumbling around. They told me to come in as soon as they got it at, when they got there at 8 a.m. Um, she got a, they did a quick glucose test on her. She was very high and my vet came in and talked to me and, you know, explained like a bunch of stuff um, about like ketones and stuff that I really didn't understand. But the main thing was like, she's dehydrated, even though she's been drinking 
lots of water, which is a big concern. And the like super high level of blood sugar, her, the numbers of her blood sugar were super high and it was just a cause for concern that they, she didn't feel like she was equipped for and that I needed to speak to someone that could like tr get her, mm, you know, regulated quicker. So we went to the emergency vet and um, kind of when I was there, like I still didn't think that it was super a dire situation. They were like, you know, like we can give her a faster acting insulin that can get her regulated more quickly. And then we can work on her dehydration, put her on fluids. We can run some tests. We'll see like what like is happening with you know, the ketones and her kidneys and liver and stuff like that. And we'll just see if anything, if anything else is happening. And so I just thought like, she'll be here for 24 hours and she'll get like the fluid she needs. And then I'll pick her up in the morning and we'll just like restart, you know, our schedule of the insulin. Um, she never, a little bit to the story is that she, we hadn't gotten her regulated on her insulin yet. Um, we had, we were on our third or fourth round of increasing her units of insulin. Um, and we had just changed up the amount of food that she was getting. Um, and so it was to my knowledge, like that was a pretty normal thing. It can take up to like six months or eight months to get a dog regulated on the insulin. So it wasn't cause for concern to me based on like things that I had read. I was on a Facebook group. I was on, like I was talking to my vet and it was like, you know, it just, sometimes it takes time. And so I just didn't think that it was like super dire. Um, when I left the vet, they were like, you know, I said, oh, like, am I gonna get any updates? And they were like, oh, they'll probably call you in the morning. And I was like, so they're not gonna call me tonight. And they were like, um, no, if they call you tonight, it's probably not a good situation. Um, so I went to dinner and around like 9.30 ish, I got a call from the vet and um, she said that she was pretty concerned about the numbers she was seeing on tests that they were running and that she um, was going to call and consult a specialist to try to get a plan of action because it was something that she um, just wanted to consult with someone on. And so I was like, okay, this isn't good. Um, she, I'm, when I tell you the final diagnosis, she had said these words to me, but they're big, long words that I didn't understand at the time. And so like, um, I didn't really know what to think, but basically she said that, um, well, okay rewind or no fast forward I guess so I come home I have some guests um staying with me for two nights they were just getting in um uh my friend was that was visiting town was coming by to see my new place and all of those people arrived at the same time and um I got a call from the emergency vet again basically saying that they spoke to the specialist and um, it was pretty bad. And basically I should come in um, because I had to obviously make this hard decision. Um, and they said that this condition that she has, which is she had diabetic ketoacidosis and then hyperglycemic hypersomolar syndrome that this only happens in like 5% of dogs that are diagnosed diabetic. And then of that 5%, only 20% even have a chance of living past a short amount of time. Um, and I, you know, got over there as quickly as I can. I got to go back and see her for a little bit before I really had to like make a hard decision, the hard decision that I had to make. And um, 
I can't cry. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. I wanted to like not look like a scrub, but I have a photo shoot soon. <laughs> So I don't know why I did this to myself, but I just wanted to get this video done so that it can be uploaded. Um, I got to go back and see her. If you guys follow Carrie Dayton, um, her and I have a special bond um, just outside of this, but then also her pup was also in the same emergency vet the same night and I don't I don't know this for sure but I had to go back into the back part of the vet where they're doing surgeries and stuff to see Macy initially because they were like she's hooked up to a bunch of stuff and like we can't really bring her out here when I walked back I remember there being a larger dog underneath where she was they have like kennels that are kind of built in and she was on a second level that was like at my kind of like chest level but there was underneath there was a larger dog and I don't know for sure because I was so I was crying so much and I was like so like focused on Macy but like I I want to say that it the little like glimpse I can like muster up in my mind I think was Carrie's dog Layla who did end up passing away the same day that Macy did um, and that has really given us like a bond that we've been able to, you know, talk to each other and talk through our feelings. And we both like got these necklaces for in memory of our dogs. And I, we got them for each other, but then we realized that we both had done that, which is crazy because we just have these like congruent, like stories of them being there at the same time and me possibly seeing her and them passing on the same day and then we both got each other the same necklace I got an L for her she got me an M but we had already gotten them and we were already wearing them when we showed up so um that's just a side note but I got to see her for a little bit and then I asked to speak to the vet again and for her to really give me like the hard facts and not to sugarcoat anything to tell me like what she would do if it were her dog like what the odds are that if I decided to use every single bit of my money to give her the extensive emergency care that would be necessary if I were to try to, you know, keep her around longer. Like I just asked her to really like break down every angle for me because I couldn't fathom making that decision on a whim or with any doubt in my mind. And she kind of just told me like, you know, I don't think that even if you did the aggressive like medical care that would be needed, I don't think that she would ever leave the hospital and you'd be putting her, her and her body through a lot, you know, for that to just like still be the outcome. And I think that that's like where it really hit me when I was seeing her, like from what had happened from 4 a.m. that day of her kind of like stumbling around, her legs kind of being shaky to then that it had moved through her whole body and her, she, I can only attribute it to like, I had a family member that had Parkinson's disease. I have a family member also. I have one that has passed and one that currently has Parkinson's and like um, her just body and head was like shaking so much and that's what it reminded me of. And I was like, this just seems like, so it's gotten so bad and over these hours that I it was really hard to process but her being so blunt with me helped in me like being able to make that decision and I, I don't think I could have done it if there was any doubt in my mind um so I had to make the decision and it was very very hard to do and it's something that I don't envy, I don't wish it upon, you know, anyone to have to make that decision. But like, that's like the risk you take of having a, a, a pet. And the 12 years that I got with her, I like, am so grateful for. 
can't cry. Okay. The 12 years that I had with her and all the memories I had were so worth it. And I'm so happy that I had them. So that's the story. That's what happened. I really appreciate everyone's kind words that have, um, you know, been there. People have given me such kind words since she got diagnosed with diabetes since this happened, um, since she passed. And I really appreciate all of that. I'm so glad that you guys got to know her a little bit through the vlogs over the years. And um, just, I just wanna say thank you to everyone. So that's gonna be the end of the vlog. I have to stop because I have to, cannot cry. It's gotta be done. <laughs> um, but um, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for loving Macy as much as I do. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. It will be um, us going to DC and Chicago. And um, I'll see you then. <laughs>